All right, so if you've ever run your website through any page speed kind of test, maybe the Lighthouse tool as an example, then you might have seen something like this pop up as a suggestion to better optimize your website. So it's saying that you should serve your images in next generation formats, or more specifically, WebP is what they usually recommend. And WebP is a file format for images on the web, and it's been around for a while now, like over 10 years. But if you saw this message maybe five years ago, I'm not really sure that it would be worth it to actually convert your images into WebP just because the browser support for it was so bad. So back just five years ago, I think only Chrome and Opera actually supported WebP. But these days WebPs are much more widely supported. They're available in all modern browsers. And if you need to support older browsers like Internet Explorer, you can still include a fallback just in case. But I would really recommend starting to use WebP for a lot of your images just because you can save a lot of file size on your images. So at least in a lot of tests that I've run, you can get around maybe a 30% reduction on a lot of your JPEGs and PNGs that you usually use. So in this video, I'm just going to go over how to convert your images to WebP, how to use it in your code, and maybe automate the process if you're using a framework like Hugo or maybe WordPress. And so let's just start by converting a few of our images over to WebP. So you could do this with a lot of modern image editors. I know GIMP by default supports WebP. You can save, you can edit them. And some command line tools like Image Magic that I've shown in other videos can handle them as well. But in this example at least, I'm going to actually use the official WebP command line tool. And you can get this from your package manager. I believe uh, it's either going to be under the WebP and it's either going to be under that or libwebp. I believe for Arch you would install libwebp. For something like Debian you would install webp. But anyway, once you get this installed via your package manager, you can run this command with C webp. C is for converting to webp. And let me just show you the couple of files I have in here. So I have a JPEG right here and I have a PNG. And we can see how much we can optimize this. We can see how low we can get the file size to go. So let's just start off with CWebP, and let's start with the JPEG right here. So first off, you can pass in the quality with this dash Q option. And for me, I'm gonna do 80, 80%. 80 you can go lower, but 80% is around uh, pretty much indistinguishable quality from a normal JPEG image. So I'm going to use that. And then I'm just going to grab this landscape picture that I have here, and then dash O will be the output so let's say landscape.webp, run that. And as we can see, it is around 94 kilobytes right here. And that's down from something like 140 kilobytes. Let me just open this up so you can see the difference. So this is 139 kilobytes, this is 94 kilobytes. That's a pretty good optimization already. And we can actually open this up if you wanna see a comparison between these. So I don't know if you can see the difference in the video quality that I have here, but they're pretty much indistinguishable. So you're getting basically the same image quality, just for less. And so let me next convert a PNG. And with WebP, you can also convert losslessly. So lossy compression is of course JPEGs and photos. You have tons of different colors. So it uses some compression so that you don't get a giant file size. But for something like the PNG we have here, there's not that many colors, so we can just save it losslessly and not have it compress at all. And we can do that with the dash lossless option right here. And so now we would just uh, pass in the other one here. That would be screenshot.png. And the output will be screenshot.webp. Hit enter. And we can already see that this is only 27 kilobytes now. Let's open this up. And so that's 137 kilobytes compared to 27 kilobytes. So in that case, it's a huge file size saving, which is great. And so that's the absolute basics on how to convert your images to webp. Obviously, if you had tons of images, you would want to write a script, or you would probably even want to use some kind of framework if you have a big enough website. Like, for example, I already mentioned Hugo, my favorite, or something like WordPress, or any of these other popular ones. But in this case, we're just going to take these WebPs that we have, and I'll show you how to display this in HTML. So let's open up some HTML right here, and here's the syntax that you want to have. So we're going to use the picture tag, and first off, Inside this picture tag, you're gonna to wanna to insert an image like you always would inside HTML. This is just going to be the source. This is just going to be written like you've always written your image tags. And we're actually gonna use this image tag as the fallback right here. 
So just in case they're using an older browser, let me actually show you the browser support for this. So these days it's supported in pretty much everything. Safari is supported in Mac OS 11 and later, so that'll be most people, but it's not supported in Internet Explorer, but basically all other browsers are supported. So it'll probably display correctly for 95% of your users. But just in case, we do have this fallback here, so if it can't load it, then it will load the JPEG image instead. It's not a huge deal. But up here we have the source for the actual WebP, and you're going to want to put the location under this source set field, and then you're going to want to put this type of image slash WebP. And so this will just work through, and if it can't load this, then it will load this afterwards. That is the fallback. And if you're confident that you don't need to support any older browsers, then you could just remove all of this and just put the WebP in the image tag right here. I personally wouldn't do that, but you can if you want to. And if you have an automated process that's resizing all the images for you and making all the boilerplate for you, if you're using a framework, then it's not going to be any work at all to additionally add an, a JPEG as well. And so if we open this one up, then we can now check the network tab and see what's actually loading. And yeah, the landscape.webp is now loading. So our browser supports it, so it's just going to use that. And so let me just give you a quick example on how to do this in Hugo, which is my favorite static site generator. I've made plenty of videos about this. If you want to create a blog or a simple static website, then Hugo is really great to use. So as you can see in this example, what I'm doing is just grabbing the image. This is Hugo's way of fetching the featured image of this post. I do have a whole other video on working with images in Hugo if you're interested. But anyway, yeah, you would just pass in the picture here, the source here, then you would put in some code to automatically resize the image into a WebP format. And then you would also add something in order to resize it just to a normal JPEG as a fallback. And so once I've set this up, now I can basically add any images to my Hugo website and it'll automatically convert it to WebP. It'll automatically convert it to a thousand pixel across JPEG as well. So that is literally no extra work that I have to do. All I have to do is drag a JPEG into a folder and it gets processed automatically. Because if I had to go through and run a command line tool every single time I wanted to add an image to my website, that would get pretty annoying pretty fast. And this is just one example. If you're using a different static site generator or some tool like WordPress, almost all of these frameworks and CMSs have some kind of plugin or some way to convert to WebP. So all the work that you would have to do is do a little bit of research and find a good plugin that will convert everything for you and then you don't have to touch anything else. So that's why I would really recommend doing WebP just because once you have it set up, it's just a big file size saving with almost no effort on your part. So anything that'll give my users a better experience and have them load less images. I try to keep my websites as trim as possible because I know some people are on slower connections. And finally, I'll just say that WebP is not the only next generation image standard out there. So there are other ones, especially the new and popular AVIF file that are kind of coming up and they're kind of being pushed a little bit, but they just don't have the same support as something like WebP. So I can't really recommend them. So with AVIF, uh, there are cases where you can save even more file size than something like WebP. But at this point, as you can see, the browser support is just kind of spotty. So I don't really think it's worth it at this point to do it. Maybe in the future I'll make a whole another video on AVIF and why I don't think that it's worth it right now to put it in your websites. But that's why I like the middle ground of WebP because it's going to be faster than something like JPEG or PNG while still being widely supported by the vast majority of browsers. So if you go and convert your images to WebP on your website right now, I think it'll make the internet a little bit faster and just make the world a better place.